Back on HQ as the fight world fixes its sights on UFC 249. The pay-per-view event will take place Saturday in an empty arena in Jacksonville, and the oddities have already begun. Tuesday, the UFC exchanged its usual press conference for a phone conference with main event foes Justin Gaethje and Tony Ferguson offering their thoughts on the star-studded card. This is awesome. I mean, you can hear it in both of our voices, dude. There's no with this. You know, when they had the wars going on and everything else, there was no sport. They only had, like, the Olympics going on. Right now, there's no Olympics. There's no Wimbledon. There's no NBA draft. There's no NFL draft. There's no tennis. There's no soccer, hockey. There's no baseball. This is what we bring to the table, man, and we're going to go out there and do our best, and we're going to keep sports alive. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, it's going to bring a sense of normalcy to people, and, you know, I'm proud to be a part of it. Um, you know, that the the opportunity to inspire. People need to be inspired right now. They need to not let themselves, you know, become depressed, emotional, um, because they can't control what's going on right now. You have to, we got to ride it through, and uh, they need to be inspired in a way, and we can do that. We have the opportunity. Those were the cleanest bites we found, we promise. Here's a look at the card for UFC 249. Those two warriors truly putting the mixed into mixed martial arts. The main event, Tony Ferguson, Justin Gaethje, each possessing otherworldly skills from striking to submission. Ferguson notably comes into the bout riding a 12-fight win streak in the deepest division in the sport. Our Brian Campbell and UFC Hall of Famer Sugar Rashad Evans gets you set for UFC 249. Sugar Rashad, you heard Justin Gaethje use that word, normalcy. Us fight fans, us journalists, we're going to get a little bit back to the basics, back to what we know this weekend. Only here's the thing, Rashad. Justin Gaethje, Tony Ferguson, interim title fight in the lightweight division. These two guys are anything but normal fighters. What can the casuals expect Saturday night for this only game in town showdown? Well, I think you can expect from the fight from that same exact position in which they just talked. Fighting from that position where they know that everybody's going to be watching them. They know what this fight means to the world because we're all fighting right now. And I think that energy right there is going to be the energy that carries the whole entire crowd. Look, this fight, let's not fool around. This has fight of the year potential for it before they even get into the octagon. You very rare you get that situation. Tony Ferguson riding a 12-fight win streak in the sport's deepest division. You got a new look, Justin Gaethje. Three and oh in his last three outings, all first round KOs. When you get this type of combustion together and also take into account sort of the unprecedented nature of the training camp and the on and off of starting and stopping this car before we finally have it on Saturday. Can this be anything but an all action Savage Classic, Rashad? I can't see it going any other way. You know, you take Tony Ferguson, who's just been chomping at the bit for a long time for his chance to show that he's the best in the world and just going through what he's been through outside the octagon and just finding his rhythm once again, once he got back into the octagon. Now he's gotten his position and now he's he, he wants this moment. And then you have Justin Gaethje. He wants to be this moment more than anything as well, too, because this is a big opportunity for him to show that he belongs to be fighting the number one fighter, Habib Namagametov. Now, Rashad, Tony Ferguson, just a few minutes ago on that UFC conference call, really laid it out, the reasoning, why he didn't just wait out Habib Nurmagomedov, your lightweight champion, who was unable to travel to this card. The fifth consecutive time the Tony-Habib fight did not go as planned after rescheduling by the UFC, and he blew up, used a lot of expletives. He basically said, forget Habib, I'm no longer talking about him. He ran away. This interim title fight is for the real belt, the real championship. Can you understand from Tony Ferguson's perspective, let's say the gamble he took in staying on this card and essentially saying, I'm not gonna chase Habib, I'm gonna just put my money where my mouth is and try to be the best I can be. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, these guys have been scheduled to fight so many times. I believe this is this is eight, the seventh or eighth time that they've been scheduled to fight, and it just didn't happen. So at some point, you do have to move on. And I think that you know, he's he's thinking like I don't have me, how much uh, that much longer to wait around for another Habib fight. So he has to strike while the iron's hot. He already made weight one time, and now he feels like his body already went through one camp. So all he has to do is just spark it up just one more time and be right back. 
36 years old, Tony Ferguson, going to get his close-up on Saturday night. But, Rashad, it's two title fights atop this very loaded card as US UFC comes back swinging. We got three cards in an eight-day span, all inside Vistar Veterans Memorial Arena in Jacksonville. And the co-main event this Saturday night at UFC 249 is a very interesting bantamweight title duel. Henry Cejudo makes the first defense of his title against two-time former champion Dominic Cruz. Considering the oddball scenario here, Cruz is being shifted into this spot at 35, four years removed from his last fight. Does it make sense for Cruz to get this opportunity, Rashad, and cut the line of contenders ahead of him? I wouldn't say it makes sense, but I think it's the right thing to do right now, considering what we're facing right now. You know, with the circumstances that it is the way it is with COVID-19 not being able to travel, I think he fits the best for when it comes to uh, making people want to watch it and being ready to go right now. So, and, and not for nothing, I mean, you know, Dominic Cruz is the uncrowned champ at 135 when it comes to setting that legacy. You know, he to beat Dominic Cruz at 135, it means something. You know, I think that the, the torch doesn't get passed until you beat a Dominic Cruz. Well, Cruz, an inspirational figure. He's come back from injury before. He said on today's conference call, a little back and forth trash talk. He doesn't expect this fight to be difficult because he does not consider Henry Cejudo a real bantamweight. He thinks that's going to be the advantage coming in. We can't wait to check that out. So many great fights on this very deep card that we mentioned. But Rashad, the boss, UFC president Dana White, stopped by these parts on CBS Sports HQ today. And you know I had to ask him about that topic everyone's talking about. Two words, Fight Island. Let's hear how Dana reacted. The one thing that we did when this thing all started was we tried to figure out what, how is this going to affect our business over the next year or, or more. And the, the one thing that we absolutely knew with this problem was we were going to have trouble getting people in from out of, out of the country um, as the world started to shut down. So how do we – we're, we're a global business. If we just keep putting on fights in the U.S., we're going to smoke all our talent and, uh, and, and we won't be able to put on fights for the rest of the year. We need international fights. So we figured out this deal with Fight Island and uh, all the infrastructure is being built. It will hopefully be done by mid-June. And I can go that weekend that it's done or by the end of June, we'll start putting on international fights. Rashad. Dana's still being a little bit cryptic and mysterious about the location of Fight Island. We know they'll be in Jacksonville for three cards in the next eight days. But as a former fighter, a former UFC light heavyweight champion and Hall of Famer, what would be your opinion if you got that phone call? Get on a plane, show up, can't tell you where, but we're fighting. Man, this just tickles me pink, I'll tell you right now. It, 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 just, it just makes me excited, and I wish I got a phone call like this because this reminds me of like an old school Bruce Lee movie like Enter the Dragon, you know, come to Holland's Island and fight for your stake. This is what this is to me. And if I got that call, oh my gosh, they wouldn't even have to pay me. I'll just be like, uh, just, just to be a warrior enough to be there will be enough for me. All right, Rashad, in closing here, there's a deep undercard like we talked about. Give me one more fight that you have your eyes on and why. Man, I got to say Donald Cerrone and, uh, and, and Anthony Showtime Pettis, you know, both old school WC guys, you know, they, uh, and Showtime got them the one time when they fought. But I'm looking at this is a different cowboy and they're both at this, the right position and the right mindset and the right position in their career right now to fight. So I think it's going to be fireworks. Yeah, all action out of that fight. Also, let's not forget about this heavyweight bout. You're looking at Francis Ngannou, Giant Zier, Rosenstruck, two bangers, maybe fighting for a title shot and the future of the division at stake as the king, Stephen Miocic, is stands in waiting. But we'll find out a loaded card Saturday from Jacksonville. It's UFC 249. We are back in business. All right, thank you, BC. And as always, you can get more from the world of fight Nowhere better than the State of Combat podcast. Anywhere you find your podcast, Brian Campbell joined by some of the biggest names in the game. He'll get you set for 249 and wrap it up when it's all finished. But why wait? A reminder, Wednesday night on CBS Sports Network and streaming on the CBS Sports app, Bellator MMA coming your way at 8 p.m.